Okay, it's uh, it's me, Robert Downey Jr., your best friend, your mentor, your um, zenith. If you used to own a television, that was a zenith. Um, we're just kind of making it happen today. We um, are interviewing. I'm interviewing. You're not interviewing. You're watching me interview. Uh, Mr. Tracy Morgan, um, superstar, Mr. Uh, comedy guy. Um, and we're going to we're going to be he's going to be entering the room shortly. It's about one minute till. OK, I think he's coming in now. Oh, there he is. There's Tracy. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Yo, what's going on? Can y'all hear me clearly? Yeah, we can hear you real nice. You sound great. You look great. You, you look, look fantastic. Better. Well, I don't feel better. I feel like um, I have to be completely honest with you. I took a mm -hmm. coffee enema and it's just now creeping up into my um. My blood cells. So, was you know, it, was, it, feel, was it was it a latte? Did you get that it, latte? I did get a latte. I got almond milk and also regular milk, so they could just fight I, it out. I could I couldn't do the almond milk. That that would give my booty the hives. I'm allergic. <laughs> Which leads me to my first question. Do you mind if I do, we just start with the questions? Let's and, dive in, Papa. I'm here. Okay, here's my first question, and this is a question I also got off the internet, so I thought it was a good mm -hmm. one. How many women have you got pregnant? You know what? The numbers are we still, I have Andrew Steele is looking into the number right now as we speak. <laughs> I, the, it's, it's, it's numerous and countless. It's infinite. It's I've, infinite. I've been, in, I've been in television for 30 years. If you don't know me, your TV ain't been on. It's too many to count. Which leads me to my next question. What's the craziest thing you ever said in an elevator? The craziest thing I ever said in the elevator was I fought it. Nobody ever wants to own up. I owned up. You are a juggernaut. You are, you know what you are? You remind me of the future when the future was in its state of like futuristic, like just theory, like ethereal, like, like cathartic. Like the Logan's Run future. Remember the Logan's Run future? Everybody's supposed to be wearing tinfoil. But are we, are we headed towards that? Are we headed towards tinfoil? Twi Ten feel? What is it? Ten feel? I'm I'm fine with ten foot. foot. Listen, let me explain some. I love I love tin foil because if nothing else, you can look fly in it, and you could also take some leftovers in it. <laughs> that is true. That's you know that's, which leads me to my next question. Tell me about your skincare because you have you have you have amazing skin. What's your skincare regimen? I, can I personally say that I use I use retinols? With, okay, with, okay. Uh, with acid rain, I use a combination of the two. What do you do? You know what? You know, I mean, you've heard the term before, black don't crack. Black don't right. crack. Russell Simmons been 80 years old for the last 30 years. He still look like he could, you know, bag some young shorty. So I'm the same way. You know what keeps my skin looking healthy? Um, cocoa butter. You need cocoa butter. Um, um, I'm going to say cocoa butter with a nice mix. You gotta use that split on oatmeal and cocoa butter, and maybe a little shade nut butter. I like a little nut in my butter. You you like nut in your butt? I like Her? nut in my butter. Nut in your butter? In my butter. Do you do that? Is that a nighttime regimen? I mean, you don't just put the oatmeal on your face during the day. I mean, or, or do no, you? No, I use, usually what happens is when I make oatmeal, right? I make it in, in, in the morning for breakfast and then I save a little to the side. I leave it in a bowl. I leave it in a bowl in, in the microwave. I use tinfoil. I put it, I put tinfoil over it to keep it warm all day. You got to let it, you got to let it marinate all day, Papa. Got to let that marinate. And then at night, I, I, I mix in the cocoa butter. I mix in the shea nut butter. And then, it, then it's a concoction, but it leaves my skin... Fresh and beautiful, and I'm glowing. I'm glow. I'm glowing like Naomi Campbell at 86. You look like I was just gonna say you look like Naomi Campbell at 86. Naomi ain't never looked this pretty. You have exotic pets. You have exotic animals. I heard you have a jellyfish. Is that right? I have jellyfish, but I ain't never used them to spread spread on my toast with with my shea butter. Okay, see, so you, you don't mix the two. You don't you don't mix your exotic animals with your skincare regimen. No, okay. no, 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 no. No, they got their own life. I, you know, I have a, I have a job. I love, I love, I love sea creatures. You, y'all, stop acting like you ain't been to my house and, and seen. I got a massive aquarium. I got a massive aquarium, and I like to just, I like to just get lost in them. I ain't going front. I ain't going. I love getting lost in in their effervescent beauty.
And and that is and that is and that what does that lead to though? I mean, what is what is what is it kind of because when I went to your house, I was blindfolded and that was my choice, but it 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 left me feeling um, a certain sense. Of, I mean, it, it could sort of concentrate. I concentrate more on the smells. Like you had a, a beautiful. It smelled like aqua. Aqua breeze, aqua breeze. Remember aqua breeze? It was it was aqua breeze. I I had that flown in. I had this. I had the smell. I had the taste of tropics flown in. I had them. They they brought a bunch of old mayonnaise jars that were washed out. They 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 jarred the scent of of Barbados with a hint of Saint Martin. And then they brought them to my house. I opened them up, and now we have effervescent scents of of the tropics in, in my household. We did that. I, I I like that you came to my house blindfolded. It gave you mystery. It gave you mystery, and then it also helped open up your other senses. Your other senses were at, at a heightened advantage. You were like yeah. Daredevil. I know. I know Iron Man is is the Monica, but you were like Daredevil. You could smell more. Now you're a guy that feels like, and correct me if I'm wrong. You feel like you have superpowers. Do you feel like you have superpowers? If you had a superpower, you could pick a superpower. What superpower would you pick? Well, I, you know, I think, I think all of us, I think all of us are in touch with, with, you know, um, you know, science and Michael Jackson told us that we only use about seven to thirteen percent of our brain's capacity. So I do believe that if you concentrate hard enough, you could fly. You could jump off a building and fly. I'm not going to test that theory, but I believe it's possible, huh? I believe it's possible, and if I if I had superpowers, and let me tell you something, I got superpowers. My my superpowers are the power of persuasion. I'm like Professor X, but darker. I'm like Professor X with with good hair and a darker skin regimen. Um, you know that's in touch with his melanin side, and and I communicate with people. You know, like right now, right, right. right. I mean, just how you're holding uh, your uh, face, uh, right, right. You saw right. that. I made I made you say that, but is that psychological? That. Is that psychological? Or is that just part of your personality? That's that's is a little it's a mixture of both. I'm a tropical blend of fruity flavors. Speaking of tropical, uh, what did you think of my role in Tropic Thunder? Was I, I? You know what? I thought I thought you were a black man. I thought you were Negro. I thought you were at least a Moor or or Aborigine. I didn't realize it was you. Right, I'm but, gonna call I mean, you Bobby. Could I call you Bobby? I rather you. I rather you listen, did. I thought when I first saw that, I said to myself, "Yo, Brandon T. Jackson and that other black dude with the goatee, yo, they're brilliant." I had no idea. Not since Anthony Michael Hall in the bar scene in Weird Science have I seen a black man uh, played by or portrayed by a white man so effortlessly. And you were in that movie. <laughs> I, <wish. laughs> I just realized I'm talking about a movie and you were in weird science. How crazy is that? Psychic energy. You know what? That that in itself is weird science. It is. Here we are 30 some years later. Talk now, I want to talk it's about a classic. What was it like about... working with John Hughes and Anthony Michael Hall and the other dude? Nothing. We well, haven't seen that other white we dude. Kept, we time. really kept our well, we, we kept our distance. I mean, we had you know, I'm a big guy. I like melon. I like, you know, orange melon. And I okay. would take the majority of the orange melon from the food cart, you know, from the from the catering. And mm -hmm. that sort of rubbed them the wrong way because they also like orange melon. But orange. let me get to something. I want to talk about something. Don't, I, don't, I don't want to talk about that really anymore. I want to, I'm going to move on. Okay. That's, I apologize. Bye-bye. No, no harm, no foul. I want to talk about rumors because there was a rumor about you at the Bronx Zoo. How do you feel about rumors? You know what? I, I don't have a problem with rumors as long as they don't get outlandish. As long as they don't get out of out of pocket, out of line. I have no problem with rumor. I love Rumor Willis. I love that, you know, Demi Moore and Bruce Willis, they had a daughter that has like daddy's face with mommy's lips. That's that's interesting and weird at the same time. You know, it has a sort of a, a jawline like a pops, you know. But she she has a sexiness. She has a sexy ethereal thing to her. So I appreciate Rumor Willis. And um, you know, I like I like. I, what was the question? It doesn't matter really because you just you, you answer questions in a way that you don't even need to know what the question was okay, or okay. is. You know, I, I find that I find that cool about you. And there's an, there's an even coolness. Have you ever been river rafting? 
River rafting. I was some, you know what? I was supposed to go river rafting. We were supposed to do. Remember that movie with with Owen Wilson and Dax Shepard, and they were river rafting. I was supposed to be in that. I was supposed to be in it, but I was doing cop out with Bruce Willis. Look at that. Right. We brought it back around again. I'm telling you, psychic <laughs> energy, Tony Starks. Right. Right. So what happened? You, I mean, how did that feel? How did you feel not to be able to do movies? I mean, is there a movie it's that you- It's frustrating. Because, cause look, I, I, you know, I come, from, I come from the hood. Represent BK and the Bronx. I, I come from the hood. I want, I want all the jobs. I want all the jobs like Steve Harvey. I want, I, if somebody asked me if I could do something, I want to be able to say yes. That's what you want to do. You want, you get it. You don't get in this to sit at home. Right. You saw how right. Joan Rivers felt that every time she looked, looked at her calendar and saw nothing but the KKK it was too blinding. It was white. I right. want, I want my calendar filled up. I need every, right. I need everything. I need my calendar filled up so that I can stay, so I can stay happy. I'm happiest when I'm at work. I'm like, I'm like the, the seven dwarfs. Whistle while you work. See, you can whistle too. You got your man of a million, of a million talents. I got a couple of things. I'm no, I'm no Mike. I'm not, I'm not like that dude Mike from from Police Academy. You know, I right. can't make all the Michael Michael Winslow. Michael Winslow, he's talented. That's talent. Talk about the internet. I mean, what do you? How do you feel about the internet? I mean, how do you feel? I like the internet, Papa. I like, I like. You know what? It's like, it's like the Dagobah system. You know, when you go, when when Luke Skywalker. Um, spoke to Obi Wan Kenobi, or Obi Wan Kenobi spoke to him uh, from his ethereal form, and he was, you know, he was, he 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 knew something was calling him. It was calling him like the crack was calling Pookie and New Jack City. Right. And he went to the Dagobah system. So that's what the internet is. It calls us. You don't always want to be in on there. You know, sometimes you just want to look up what an aardvark looks like. Sometimes you go down a rabbit hole. Next thing you know, you're looking at, at European porn. You had no idea you were supposed to be down there, especially because you were supposed to be watching the children. But I digress. I, you digress, but you also bring up tool. You bring up a very interesting point. I mean, there's there's aardvarks and there's yeah. European porn, but there's yeah. also aardvark porn. Yeah. I mean, why is why is one illegal and, and the other the other two aren't? Well, you know what? Some women, it depends on what women are into. And some things are allowed uh, in, in different parts of Europe and, and, uh, and the Middle East. Some things are allowed. You'd be amazed at how many aardvarks walk around with erect uh, varks. Their varks are wrecked. Their, right. their, 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 their varks are fully engorged. They're engorged. Wow. And, fully and engorged. What? How how can you tell when one's fully engorged and how much time have you, you tell spend? when one's fully engorged? Cause rem remember back in the days when when um remember when like Elmer Fudd would have his shotgun and he would shoot Daffy Duck in the face, which I'm telling you that's a, you know that was that was a, a prelude to January six. You know Elmer Fudd represented the far right. Elmer Fudd Elmer Fudd was the far right and Daffy Duck was Black Lives Matter. And they shot him, and the beak went up. That's what a vark looks like. When when our vark is hard, it's vark. That's what it's, you know, scientifically, that's what it's called. It's called a vark. It's called a vark, Tony Stark. Now, it's, it's very it's difficult to know. It gets hard. It aims up. It curves. That means it was being stroked upward in an upward motion. What do you think about avocados? I, mean, I, think, you... I think avocados are, um, there's, there's a hype to them. You know, avocados and and uh was and truffle oil. I didn't hear about truffle oil anywhere two years ago. Now it's everywhere. Every time I want French fries, they ask me if I want uh truffle oil fries. I'm like, could I just have some French French fries? I don't I don't need anything extra. I'm a purist. Tony Stark, I'm a purist, Bobby. I'm a purist, and the same with avocados. I don't need avocado toast. Whatever happened to butter? I just like I like butter. Right. I would I would give me give me some toast or a cinnamon raisin bagel with with butter. I don't need a, I don't need no avocado. Who am I, the Incredible Hulk? <laughs> Yo, I just Christ. brought up somebody else you associated with. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's funny you say the avocados and the Hulk because they're both green. But also, it's like, listen, I'm not always in the mood for an avocado. Right. I got to be in the right. mood, and you know, timing it with 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 the avocado being ripe. 
I mean, that's not easy to do. I mean, that's not, I mean, it's almost impossible. It's too much work. It's too much work. Yeah. You buy some country cock, country crock, not cock. That's a different, that's a, that's a movie. <laughs> right. No, that's you something. buy some country crock and you open it up. It's ready to be spread. It's ready right. to be spread. You, you almost don't need toast with country crock. Just give it a spoon and go for it. You get a spoon. Let me, let me tell you something. On, on nights like this, I wish raindrops would fall. Sometimes I sit at home. And if I'm not doing anything, I ain't got no ice cream, but I got a bucket of country crop. Give me a spoon. I'm going in, Papa. I'm going That's in. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, talk about Brian Fellow. I mean, is this hypothetical, this character? Is he a real guy? I mean, where's he come from? Brian Fellow, he was he was he was someone that uh the writer of that sketch, and I can't I'm not sure if it was Andrew Steele. It's been it's been many years. It's been many years. But when that sketch was first written, it was written about a real life dude. But then they, you know, they allowed that's the beauty of Saturday Night Live. And you were on it, you were a cast member too back in the 80s. Don't think right. I forgot. I remember you were on that show too. You and Anthony Michael Hall. That, that's those were the John Hughes years. They were the John Hughes years. Right. And and Brian Fells, they they gave me freedom. To you know, add my own stink to it. I added my stink something special. It was funky up in there, like James Brown after he showered. I mean, my favorite part was lip balm. What what kind of lip balm did you use for that character? Lip balm. You know what I used? It was a mixture of Burt's Bees. I mm -hmm. used Burt's Bees, and funny enough, avocado oil. Avocado, avocado oil. oil gives you a nice glisten to your lips. So did they mix all this together, or did they add the avocado at the end? The they mixed it all together. When you're celebrity, you you can have certain things made. I had a woman, a woman from Harlem, a woman from Harlem put me on to that mixture. She was she was um she was Nigerian and Mexican, thus the avocado. Right. She was she was uh she was the Corpus Christi of of uh, of, of uh, exactly exactly of lubrication. She was like Corpus Christi meets Nigeria. Let's talk about this. You hosted a show called Scare Tactics. What yeah. what what scares you? You know what what scares me? Um, uh, the 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 morning after pill. You know, I talk right. a good game. I don't want no no babies. I'm I'm shoot. Everybody wants a piece of me. I'm you know about it's it's all in love. When I say I want to get you pregnant, that just means I'm giving you a compliment. I don't really want you to swell up. That's more responsibility. And I take care of mine. Don't get it twisted. I take care of mine, Bobby. But at the same time, it's a lot. It's a lot. Right. So you what want, scares you... me? Um, um, racism scares me. Um, you know, and and people that claim you didn't pull out when you know you did. And you flush that down the toilet. I flush it. I flush it and watch it go down. Papa, I, I ain't leaving no remnants. <laughs> you, 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 flush, you flush condoms? No, you can't. You know, you can't do that because it's you know the, those will those will choke the ducks in the ocean. You don't want that. Then you mess around and have a hybrid baby, a, a baby that looks like Daffy Duck and me. That's not a good look. So, what do you flush? I, I usually use tissue. You gotta use tissue. You gotta use tissue. Usually, I'll I'll I'll, I'll save the I'll rinse the condom out. I'll, I'll empty the condom into tissue, throw that in the in the toilet, and then I actually will. I have some. I have a. I have a person. You know, I have an assistant that will burn the uh the 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 the, the condom. The condom. You, you have a person. Burn. You have a. You have a. You have so assistant. that is the only job is to burn used condoms. Okay. You can recycle them, but nobody wants to use condom. That's nasty. Now, you want to use burn? a? Does how Iron they, Man want to use a used condom? Put no, it this way: iron. Would you? Would Iron Man use a uh, Star Lord's used condom after he's after he messed with a uh, Gamora? No, probably not. But I mean, but yeah, that, that's that's what I'm saying. So why would you expect me to do it? Come on now. But I'm just thinking practically. You know, I mean, like you're you're burning rubber. I mean, how do you even go about doing that? I mean. it's... I mean, what does your assistant do? Listen, anything is possible if you know the right people. <laughs> you know what I'm talking that's, about. That's true. Yeah, you get anything done if you've got if you got money. Yes, sir. You've yes, got sir. you know fortitude, and and the willingness to get things done. Yes, sir. Um, let's see. Uh, let me ask you some other questions. I know a lot of people do impressions of you. How do you feel about that? Do, do you like? You know what? I don't listen. I remember years ago. 
um, friend of mine, Dean Edwards, he was on SNL with me. Um, very talented. And I, I got a little upset when, when I found out he was doing me because I was like, I'm not celebrity. Jimmy Fallon is celebrity. But I can't, you know, I'm celebrity now. I've been doing this for a long time, Bob. Bobby, I've been doing this for a long time. And, and you know, people recognize me. Sometimes sometimes I'll just drive the Lambo down into the village just, just to get a little victory lap. Sometimes you need a victory lap. Sometimes you got to have people come up to you to, to validate and to understand you just made their night. People get to but take you, a picture with me and the Lamborghini. That's that's a beautiful week for somebody. You just made somebody's day. So but that's, when you that's first, how I feel about it. So I don't mind it as much when people show reverence. When people show love, if it comes from a good place, you can't get mad at somebody doing an impression. It's this, what do they say? It's the most sincerest form of flattery. It is the most sincere form of flattery. And so because of that, I have no problem with that. I am very comfortable in my skin. But when Dean did an impression of you at SNL, and I, I do remember hearing about this, yeah, yeah, it, it you you felt correct me if I'm wrong, but you felt like he did it behind your back because you heard from other people, oh, Dean's doing an impression of you. Um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, but, I mean, you know what? That, and and that's the thing. Perhaps perhaps if he had come forward and and told me before somebody else told me, I would have felt differently. Well, I was upset about it, but you know, that's, that's in the past. You know, we cool. He was supposed to do an episode of, of the last OG recently. It didn't happen because, you know, he was in Dubai, but you know, it's all love. And, and, and I remember on, on, uh, on 30 rock, we wound up taking Tina Fey used that story in an episode. So it stayed, it all worked out. It all, it, it all, it all kind of came full circle. Uh, what's yeah. your favorite piece of clothing that you own and why? My favorite piece of clothing, it, it might have to be my, um, does jewelry count? I mean, how how big of a piece of jewelry are we talking about? I mean, about? I, got, I got like a diamond crust. I got a diamond uh, necklace with, with, uh, with, a, with a Tracy Morgan um, uh, uh, nameplate. I like that. Um, I'm a simple man. I'll take it back. I like, I like my pro cads. I had, I had some, some pro creds. Remember pro cads back in the days you were, pro cads were like Chuck Taylors, but they were more around the way. I got a pair of pro cads, you know, throwbacks. I like, I like my throwbacks, man. I'm, I'm a simple man. I don't, I don't need all, all the glitz and glamour. I don't need all that, Bobby. Just give me a good pair of sneakers, you know, a, 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 a white tee. You know, sometimes I like my Kango. I got a Kango collection. It looks, I look, look kind of fly, but sometimes I like people to see my hair. What's something about you that your fans don't know? Like, what? Give me something that. What? Something? Something about me? My fans don't know. Um, that I'm. I got a good heart. I got a good heart, man. You know, people get caught up in the in the glamour and and the lights and cameras and the action and and the characters that we play. On TV, but I got a good heart. I'm giving. I like putting my people on. Shout out to Mark Theobald, Owen Smith, you know, a bunch of my friends that work on the last OG. We just finished season four. And yo, it's just, it's, it's that to me, that's that makes it worth worth living. You know, shout out to, to Ruperto Vanderpool, uh, Artie Fuqua, you know, all my crew around the way from the projects representing to the fullest. You know, that's how we get down. It's, it's, people don't know. I got a big heart. Yeah, I got I got a bank account, but I got a big heart too. I like I like looking out for you guys. How big he say? Spread love. It's the Brooklyn way. I got to spread love, Bobby. You're born in Brooklyn. You grew up in Bed Stuy, and yes, um, Bed Stuy do ever... or die. But let's change the now. We gotta change the narrative. It's not do or die. Sometimes, how about just Stuyvesant Heights? I just learned that years ago it was called Stuyvesant Heights. So we got raised. We got elevated. We got elevate. We got elevate. I'm elevate. What do we? What can people do now to to be less divided? To be on the same page? What can to, people do to be less divided? Um, you know, dance. You got dance to Stevie Wonder. You got dance to Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson. You know, when you're living off the wall. So tonight, gonna leave a nine to five up on the shelf and just enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Life ain't so bad at all. Yep. When you're living off the wall. Speaking Michael of Michael Jackson. Time, speaking of Michael Jackson, I know that you um, you acquired one of his gloves. Is that I, right? I got one of his gloves. I, I I got it. I got it on my mantle. 
downstairs near the bowling alley. I got it on my mat downstairs near the bowling alley. I want people to see it. Nobody could touch it. But every so often when nobody's paying attention, I'll go take it out and just put it on. And I, I could feel it. I could feel the sweat and the energy from the Victory Tour 1984. And boy, Michael was at his pinnacle. It gives me something to aspire to. It gives I mean, me something to aspire to, Bobby. But look how far you've come. Look at look at all the things you, you've accomplished. How can you see further and higher? I mean, what is it about you that's able to see further and higher? Well, look, it's like Bruce Lee said. Remember Enter Dragon, Enter the Dragon. He said, Don't concentrate on the finger, or you will miss all that heavenly glory. It's all about enlightenment. You know, water flows. It can flow or it can crash. Be like water, my friend. Be like water. How much water do you drink? You I like hydrated? to drink at least 128 gallon, uh, ounces, not gallons. If I drink 20, 128 ounces, I'll be aqua. I'm, I'll be Aquaman. <laughs> no, I drink, I drink at least 100 ounces per day. I got to stay hydrated. That keeps my skin nice, too. Hydrate your skin, whole... y'all. Make sure you hydrate. Your body, just... your body is like the earth. You like the earth. The earth is majority water, and so is your body. Keep the connections. The connections. Tracy, it's just been a, an absolute joy talking to you. You know, you are an inspiration. I don't think people get to see this side of you too often, that that you really are, you know, multidimensional, you know, futuristic, you know. You know, um, you, you bring it out of me. You bring it out of me every time. Every time we break bread, Robert Downey Jr., a.k.a. Tony Starks, a.k.a. Iron Man. You bring it out of me, Papa. I love I love you for that. I love you for just letting me be me. I feel comfortable. You know, this right. this is how people should do. It's it's a communication. It's all about right. communicating. You gotta communicate right. with each other. People don't communicate enough. Well, anything you want to plug? Any um anything you want to plug? You know what? Last OG season four is coming. Last OG season four. Um, y'all can keep an eye out for that on TBS. Um we mentioned my man Dean Edwards, so make sure you check him out on Instagram and all his social media at I am Dean Edwards. That's one of my favorite comedians to watch doing his thing. And uh, yeah, man, just and spread love. It's the Brooklyn way. That's what I promote love. I promote love. Well, I I promote you, and I um, I just I think you know. Remember, by the way, I just I'm gonna add this because I wanted to, I wanted to say it. Do you remember when we were at the Playboy Mansion and we were smoking cigars and you peed in the grotto and, and you almost yeah. got kicked out? Yeah. Do you remember yeah. that? We almost, we almost got kicked out because, yo, let me tell y'all something. Robert Downey Jr. turns up. He turns up. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. I ain't going to say how we got down, but we got down. It was a turn we up. Did. The turn up was real. Great to see you, Trace. Uh, all the Great best to you. you and Papa, I love you. Love you too. Merry Christmas, man. And uh, all right, stay Mary, good. Happy stay Hanukkah. true. Happy, absolutely. May, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy and, um, Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa. If, if, absolutely. Um, Tracy Morgan for the hour. I'm Robert Downey Jr. This is the Jeff Richards Show. And now a song from Meanest Man Contest. See you, Trace. Take care, Bob.